Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and as always a huge thank you for taking some time out of your day to join me here on my YouTube channel, The Bushcraft Padawan. I don't know about you, but one of the things that I enjoy using YouTube for, amongst many things, is to be able to get different takes on subjects, be able to look at different ideas and, and ways of overcoming challenges and different tasks and mindsets that people have sometimes around what could often be quite basic subjects, some subjects that we might all assume that we, we've got that behaviour ticked off, we've got that skill set, we've got the experience behind that. I sometimes looking at quite, I quite enjoy looking at basic type of videos just to see if there's anything that I'm missing, just to see if there's any way that I could tweak what I'm doing to, to enhance it, just to see if there's some real nuggets, some golden nuggets of ideas out there that I might be missing out on if I were just to dismiss those basic skills. And that's why I've put together today's video. Today's video is all about overnight kits, sleeping equipment, sleeping systems, sleeping ecosystems, whatever you want to call them. That's what this video is all about. Some of you will have spent hundreds, if not thousands of years, uh, thousands of nights, should I say, over the years, sleeping out. Maybe there'll be something in this video for you. For other people watching this video, maybe you're just kind of getting started with the idea of, of being outdoors overnight and are wanting to put some kit together. So I hope you'll stick with me through this video. Some of this is quite obvious stuff but I think over many years of, of, of many nights of sleeping out over the years when I was in the military I've changed things ever so slightly. There's some things that I do that, that I've not seen anybody else on YouTube talking about. So fingers crossed there's something in this video from, for you uh, to take away from this video. Thanks for watching. So here I've got my typical multi-night Bergen. Um, it's ex-military, it, it was mine when I was in service and it served me very, very well over the years. I've got all sorts of stuff in here, including my overnight sleeping system. And it's that that I wanna show you over the rest of this video. One of the key things that I do differently that, I, that I've seen from other people talking about this on YouTube, I don't stuff the individual components of the sleeping system down into separate stuff bags. In fact, I rarely use any stuff bags at all for my sleeping system inside this. Instead, well, I'll tell you what, rather than explain it, why don't I actually show you what it is that I do. So I'm just gonna pop the lid on this Bergen, take out some of my non-sleeping related kit, and let me show you what I'm talking about. So first things first, there's the Bergen itself, then I use an Ortlieb canoe dry bag as the inner liner and then inside that, and then inside that, I actually have my bivvy bag. Inside that, I have my sleeping bag. So what I do is I essentially put my sleeping bag inside my bivvy bag and I just ram it down inside my canoe bag. So there's no compression bag at play here whatsoever. I've tried them. I've used them over the years, I just don't get on with them. I suspect a part of it is down to, having been in the military, everything needing to be done at some speed. You want to deploy your sleeping system as quickly as possible. You want to get it packed away as quickly as possible. So therefore, putting things in individual stuff sacks, whilst potentially saving some space, I'm, I'm not going to decry the value of them, it's kind of a balancing act. And for me, speed was more valuable than saving space. I could always ditch something else if I needed to. So why don't I take this out of here and we'll have a little bit closer look at the sleeping bag, the bivvy bag, and a few other things that I took away as part of my ecosystem. So starting from the top then, I've got my Rab Exchange Light Event Alpine Bivvy. I've used this for many years. I bought it whilst en route to my winter ML assessment, probably in the region of about 10 to 15 years ago, and it's still going incredibly well. I really, really like this. I much prefer it to the, the military issue Gore-Tex bivvy bag that I used for many years, which is still a great piece of kit, but I much prefer this. So this is my bivvy bag. Remember, this is just stuffed by hand inside my canoe bag inside my bag, and I don't compress this in any way at all. Inside this, 
I have my Snug Pack Discovery. Now I don't think this is the current model Discovery that's out there because I've had this since about 92, 93, so I very much doubt it's the current version. Still works incredibly well. Um, I've used this all around the world in all sorts of different temperatures. Sometimes it's a bit too hot and sometimes it's a bit too cold, which is why I've got a couple of options to be able to swap this out for my mountain equipment winter bag, uh, which goes down to around minus 20. And I've also got the option to swap the sleeping bag itself out for a British Army issue jungle bag or a warm weather sleeping bag, which I also use on the rare occasions that it's warm enough to use it here in the UK. So the sleeping bag itself can be swapped out and can be interchanged with a different sleeping bag depending on the temperature that I'm expecting to see. I'm going to come back to sleeping bag in just a minute or two because there's a few hidden extras in here and then underneath the sleeping bag itself I have my Thermarest NeoAir inflatable sleeping mat. Now I've not used this a great deal, this is about the second time that I've actually used this uh, in anger so I can't say whether it's brilliant or not the first night I slept on it, I actually had to let some air out of it. It was too hard. It was, it was uncomfortable because there was so much air in there, which I don't think is a bad thing if it can hold that much air. So I let a little bit out. I allowed myself to sink into it, had a great night's sleep. But I want to hold off on giving this a great thumbs up because I've not used it often enough, to be perfectly honest. The reason I put the sleeping mat inside the bivy bag, between the bivy bag and the sleeping bag itself. The reason I do that with a sleeping mat is because I have a habit of moving around in my sleep and I think we've all spent far too many nights shuffling around trying to find our sleeping mat again so I overcome that by putting it inside the bivy bag and of course the bivy bag then acts as some level of protection from getting this punctured which can be uh, an expensive night at sleep if it does get punctured. So the bivy bag, the sleeping bag which can be interchanged, the sleeping mat itself and then inside the sleeping bag, I actually keep quite a lot of kit inside my sleeping bag because it's the stuff that I'm only going to need when I'm getting my head down, when I'm getting to sleep. One of the great things about this Discovery bag is just inside the rib, there is this kind of hidden secret pocket in there. I'd actually had the sleeping bag about six months before I realized this. And I just wanna show you a few things that I actually keep in there in no particular order. First of all, I keep a really hard plastic rubber sealed bottle with the word P or the letter P written all over it. No prizes for guessing what I use that for in the night when I can't be bothered to get up. If I need a P, I do it in that. I screw the lid back on, I just leave it in the sleeping bag and empty it in the morning. I also have in here one of those sleeping eye masks and a couple of those little sponge earplugs because the guy's got to have his beauty sleep right and as wonderful as it is to wake up to bird song that novelty rapidly wears off after about five minutes particularly in the height of summer when it can get light very very early so i like to get as much sleep as i can i mask my eyes off using that and i mask my ears off using those little foam earplugs they take up no weight or space whatsoever I also have a pair of these a Jungleac bivy boots. I've had these donkey's years and again they've served me very well all over the world. What I do when I get in my sleeping bag, I've got my socks on usually, I'll slip these over my socks and they just help to protect those feet, those extremities, those things that can often start to cool down because they're at the end of your sleeping bag, possibly hanging off the edge of your sleeping mat. So I slip these on. If it gets too hot, I just kick them off in the night and they roll about the bottom of my sleeping bag. No big deal, but again, I keep those tucked away in the sleeping bag. I also keep in here a silk sleeping bag liner. Now I don't put this, I don't climb into this automatically on a night unless I know it's gonna be really cold, unless I'm feeling the temperature already. But I keep that tucked away in there. If I need it during the night, if the temperature does drop, it's a 60 second job to pull this out the secret bag to shuffle and wiggle my way into it whilst I'm sleeping and then I've got another layer of silk to keep me warm during the night and that's often does the trick but I don't climb into this by default on a night unless I know it's going to get very very cold in which case I've probably bought another sleeping bag so again this secret pocket here contains a silk sleeping bag liner a pair of bivy boots my beauty regime, my ear 
earplugs and also an eye mask just to allow me to get as much sleep as possible and also a pee bottle as well and all of that tucks away in there it's velcro sealed and then the sleeping bag inside the bivy bag all of it scrunched up together rammed back down into my uh, sleeping bag uh, sorry into my rucksack itself into the rucksack liner forced down using my hands compressing it into all the little nooks and crannies in the bottom there and then the rest of my equipment goes on top so there we have it that's my sleeping system set up that's the way that i pack it those are the sort of little nuances little tips and tricks that i've picked up over the years usually from other people just to make my night sleep as comfortable as possible uh, as rich as possible and as least hassle as possible in terms of setting it up and stripping it back down again so what about yourselves what do you do differently is there anything in there that you do or that you don't do for a good reason do you hack your sleeping system in, in any different way than what i've done why not let me know down in the comments below what you do is there anything in there where actually a light bulb has gone on above your head and you've thought that's such a simple idea i might try that the next time i go out again it'd be great to hear that was why not leave me a comment down below if you enjoyed this video if it's given you food for thought if it's made you think differently about the way that you set your sleeping system up if it's confirmed the way that you sleep your set your sleeping system up why not give me one of those thumbs up and like the video please do comment below why not share it to members of your community on twitter or linkedin or, or facebook or wherever your colleagues are that may be interested in this sort of video why not share it with them one last thing is about 70 percent of the people who watch my youtube videos thank you to all of you uh, about 70 percent of those people that watch are not subscribers but they are people that return so if you're one of those people please do click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos such as this and for those of you that are already subscribers as always a big thumbs up from me back to you thanks for joining me in this video and i'll see you very shortly in another one Thanks for watching.